Can every believer pray in tongues? What does the Bible actually teach on this topic? To answer this question, let's first look at the portion of Scripture that seems to indicate that not all believers can pray in tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? That's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 29 and 30. And at first glance, that verse seems to indicate that the gift of speaking in tongues is not for every Christian. Paul's line of rhetorical questioning communicates a clear message, right? Well, as with all scripture, context and study are key. So consider these three points about that portion of scripture. Firstly, Paul lists several other gifts in that selection of scripture. So let's apply the same reasoning that is used on the gift of tongues to the other gifts mentioned. Are all teachers? No. But the Bible teaches us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, that all believers should be ready to teach about their faith. So there's a difference between having the gift of teaching and just being able to teach. Are all workers of miracles? No. But there's a difference between the gift of miracles and experiencing miracles in one's own life. Do all have the gift of healing? No. But the Bible teaches us in Mark chapter 16, verse 18, that all believers will be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. So there's a difference between the gift of healing and the believer being able to lay hands on the sick and believe for a healing. The same would apply to all gifts, including the gift of the evangelist. Not every believer is an Ephesians 4.11 evangelist, but every believer should evangelize. So is the Bible contradicting itself? By no means. It's clear that there's a difference between a gift, which is a public and focused area of spirit-empowered grace, and an everyday act of faith. Likewise, there's a difference between the personal prayer language of a believer and the gift of tongues that's paired in public church settings with the gift of tongues interpretation. If the verse in 1 Corinthians 12 actually taught that the gift of tongues is not for every believer, then the same verses would also have to mean that not every believer can believe God for miracles, believe God for healing, or if we applied the same logic to Ephesians 4.11, that not every believer can evangelize. The second point to consider about 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 29 and 30 is the fact that it's talking about the public prophetic expression of the gift of tongues, not the personal prayer language. We're clued into this fact by the mention of tongues interpretation. Now, I address this in detail in my short sermon, The Three Expressions of Speaking in Tongues. The third point to consider about 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 29 and 30 is simple. It asks, do all speak with tongues? Not, can all speak with tongues? So, can all believers pray in tongues? Here's what Paul says. I wish you could all speak in tongues, but even more, I wish you could all prophesy. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 5. Why would Paul the Apostle wish for something that was contradictory to God's will? And if that wasn't the will of God, why would the Holy Spirit allow that wish to be permanently recorded in the inerrant Word of God? In Acts chapter 2, verse 4, the Holy Spirit didn't discriminate. All spoke in tongues, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And Peter clearly taught that all believers could do the same. Look at what Peter says in this portion of scripture. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 39. So what promise was this? What is for all who have been called? And the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 33. So that promise, for all who have been called, was seen and heard. What was seen and what was heard? They saw them receive the Holy Spirit. They heard them speaking in tongues. I'm David Diga Hernandez, and that is your Moment of Truth. For more free teachings like this, make sure you're signed up to my emailing list so that I can send you weekly emails with content that will help you to grow spiritually. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash email.
Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.